Hi, I'm Ryan Nickel, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today I want to talk about how to create mooring lines for your aquaculture fish farm. So when we left off, we created a grid rope and mooring cage configuration from the fish farm generator tool. I made a copy of that here in a, in a new folder that I'm calling mooring grid farm. And this is the project. So it's created some files for us and at a lot of detail, but there's no mooring lines. And the mooring lines would normally cr connect to the nodes of the grid here, 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 and so on. And that's what we're going to do today is create some mooring lines and attach them. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is set the water depth to something realistically representative for the farm that we want to work with. So we'll set, change that to 30 meters. And the next thing we need to do is create our first mooring line. What we're going to do in this tutorial is create the mooring lines that go along these grid ropes on the side. And then we'll show how to make the connections between all the, the details and the components here. You can see we have bridle lines and a bridle chain, as well as the compensator buoys here. So first we'll create our cable. Um, we're going to start at this corner up here. If you're not sure exactly what the coordinates are right at the corner, um, you can click on one of the objects and see uh, where that is. So if we just click on this line, for example, and we click on state, oops, uh, just click on state there, um, this is going to be, uh, this is node zero that's down here, so that that node connection point where we want the mooring lines to be is going to be minus 30, minus 30, and 5. And you'll also note the farm has no rotation relative to the global frame here with the X in red and the Y in, uh, in green. So let's make our first mooring line. Let's click on cable. We'll call it mooring. Create. It's up to you, uh, but I prefer to have node 0 at the fair lead location and node n at the anchor. We'll change this to be fixed for the anchor position that will eventually be on the ground. Uh, we have the new cable se segment generator, segment generator uh, mode 1 here, so we'll bring that up. First we edit the geometry for the line we want to follow, and there's a lot of important settings in here. So remember we had minus 30 and then minus 30 for node 0, and then 5. Uh, for node n, um, rather than specifying the absolute location, we're going to specify some relative uh, displacements from node 0 and the azimuth angle. Um, the only thing we will say is the height above seabed. We want that to be 0 because the anchor is going to be right on the seabed. Um, typically, for this kind of a farm, we're going to be using about 150 meter uh, of line. Uh, that's including two shots of chain, but uh, just to get started, we'll put in 150 here for the delta x, y, z, and then we'll put in 180 degrees for the azimuth, so it's, it's, it's setting out from the farm. You can see it's shooting out the side here. And we'll put this roughly in for the cable length, 150. So this is making a, a perfectly straight line, and it's not going to give us the right uh, 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 it's not going to give us the right pretension, so we're going to make a slight adjustment to that. Um, this is an important setting here as well, eject nodes from seabed. Um, this just makes sure that any line that's lying along the, the seabed is just going to lie flat along that rather than sinking into it. So typically with, uh, with two shots of chain and, um, and a long fiber rope section, uh, we find using 1.01 and 1.02 of the length to the delta x, x y, z gives us a, a, a reasonably good um, pretension um, to, to start with, but we can always adjust this later. So we'll set this to 1.01, .01, and you'll see this number gets adjusted a little bit. And if we play with this a little bit, you can see adding even more line, it gets really slack here, and obviously that's not, that's too slack. And this is taut, that's definitely not what we want. We want something about 1.01. .01. And we'll go OK. Uh, it gives us a little note here just of refining the calculations when the, the nodes are popped up out of the seabed, then there'll be a slight line adjustment. I think that's fine. You, you can see we're pretty close to 1.01, .01, and I think it should be OK. 
We're going to change material properties later in another video tutorial. Uh, but for now, we'll set the number of elements. Um, I think about 12 would be would be good. Um, one meter element lengths is probably good for what we're doing. Um, we do need to resolve the, the finite element lengths to match up with the geometry um, reasonably well. So we just hit resolve, and then that fills us out for us. It'll apply. And there's our first mooring line. So eventually we'll have some chain material properties in here. There'll be some fiber rope in here. And we'll show how to apply those material properties. And then also how to go through the pretensioning process um, and check to make sure that we're in the right range of pretension later. But first, we're going to set up the mooring line components. So remember, the grid ropes along here to the next node is 60 meters, then another 60 meters, then another 60 meters. So what we're going to do to, to go through this quickly is duplicate the mooring line. So if we, we've already got this line selected, if we, have, we, can, we can deselect it, select it again, we go configuration, duplicate selected the object. I'm just going to add a little one to uh, the new copy, and this is really easy because everything's aligned to the y-axis. Go 60, remember that's the grid rope length along here. <laughs> There's no connections set already, but just, just as a matter of practice, I just do not duplicate any connections associated with this G-object. So go OK, and there's a copy of the next mooring line, part of the grid. And we can just keep going along and uh, do a duplicate again. Um, another 60 meters for this one. Don't duplicate the connection. Um, uh, the, the naming will keep prepending on the on the underscore one, so we'll have to make a change to that later. Uh, we'll just adjust that in a moment. So duplicate selected the object. Three, another 60 meters offset. Okay, and then the last one. Duplicate selected the object. Four, 60. Do not duplicate connections. There we go. So we've got our mooring lines along the side here. And what I would do at this point would be continue to go along duplicating and creating mooring lines along the other side. Um, note the names just prepend the numbers here. So what, what, what I might do here is just rename them to clean them up a little bit. Mooring line two, mooring line three, Mooring line four. Yeah, that looks a little bit cleaner. All right. <clears throat> so how do we make these connections in a quick way? Uh, we want to make sure that all of these elements are connected here. Currently, there's no connections that are that are set up between here. We're going to use the auto connect assistant to help with this. So. We need to make sure the buoy lines from the compensator buoys, the grid ropes, and in this case we've elected to use bridle chains. We need to make sure they all uh, connect to each other on the end here for the integrity of the, uh, of the system. So one way to do this uh, reasonably effectively and quickly is to pre-select what you want. And so we'll select all the grid ropes. You can see all of the grid ropes getting selected there. And at, at the end of all of this, we should see one, two, three, four, five times three, one, two, three, 15 groups of connections made between these entities. We've got the grid lines connected, selected here, the buoy compensator uh, lines, and the mooring lines. And we need to select the bridle chains as well. So we hit control. After shift selecting the larger group, we just hold down control. There's more bridle chains here. Bridle chains. Bridle chains. Bridle chains. Uh, once again, uh, I would only do this auto connect step at the very end after we've made all the mooring lines, but to just illustrate the process quickly, I wanted to do this with the mooring lines that we've connect, we, that we made so far. So we'll go to configuration, assistance, and auto connect cables. What this is going to do, if you scroll through the list of all these G objects, the pre-selection process has already got them ready to go. It's uh, the software is going to go through and detect which lines have their boundary nodes uh, within this very small tolerance of each other. 
and then help make a connection between them. So we see connection location 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. These are at the nexus of all of the nodes through the uh, mooring uh, system here. So that's good. We don't see more than 15. That would not be we've, we've selected too many things. Uh, and we'll go next. Um, now it's going to make a little point mass at these locations to facilitate the connections. And you can, uh, uh, it's giving you the option to make a, a, a prefix for the name. Um, here you might select something like uh, grid plate. Uh, we'll just leave it at default for now. Go create. It's going to go through and create all the connections for us. Um, and that's where we're going to leave things for now at the moment. So I wanted to show you how to quickly set mooring lines, get something close to the pretension value. We still need to check it and we still need to set material properties. Um, and we'll get to those in the next video tutorials. Thanks for watching.